So before we finish this month, it behooves us to remind ourselves of some of the benefits of remaining in this state that we are currently in and of conquering our sins and our desires that we have done during this month. We're about to wind down, four days left, that's it. And then when this month is over, shaitan is going to come to us and seduce us, entice us to return to our previous lifestyles. And that's where the real challenge will begin. So let us remind ourselves of some of many of the negative repercussions of the sins that we commit. And Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of our greatest ulama, he has written a very deep and profound treatise about the effects of sins. And he has discussed many dozens of the consequences of sins. Obviously, time is limited. But we can summarize some of those points. Ibn Qayyim mentions that, subhanAllah, we can even begin with the story of Adam alayhi salam. That what caused our father Adam to be expelled from the garden of Jannah except one morsel of haram. One morsel, one luqma that he did that Allah did not allow him. And because of that, Allah Azza wa Jal did what Allah justly did. One luqma. And Iblis, what was his sin? One command he disobeyed, but he did it out of arrogance, whereas Adam did it out of desire, and the two are very different. Iblis did it out of arrogance, and because of that, Iblis became the la'een, the cursed. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim He became one thrown out of Allah's mercy. One sin, because it was arrogance, it was much worse than Adam, and Iblis became who he became. What are the consequences of the sins that are done on previous generations? Because of the shirk of the people of Nuh, Allah sent the entire flood on an earth to get rid of that shirk. Because of the tyranny of previous generations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed tribe after tribe. The people of Ad, the people of Hud, the people of Thamud, all of these people were destroyed and their civilizations were far mightier than those of the Quraysh. Because of their arrogance, their tajabbur, their kibr, because of them robbing the highways and doing all types of fitna and fasad. And Ibn Qayyim mentions, that each individual Muslim should think about the consequences of sin in his or her life. So that this acts as an incentive. You know when we study evil, we study it for the sake of avoiding it. It is a part of our religion to study such evil. What is shirk? What is kufr? What are the consequences of sins? We study them just like our children are taught the dangers of smoking, the dangers of drugs, the dangers of alcohol. They're taught by the government. Why? Because when you're taught these dangers, it opens your eyes. It acts as an incentive. So we, O oh Muslims, need to study the dangers of disobeying Allah so that it acts as an incentive for us so that we don't go down this path. Of the, in, of the dangers of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Ibn Qayyim says that this one danger, this one repercussion is enough for us to be somebody who does not commit sins. Of the dangers of committing sins is that when we commit sins, we remove from our hearts the majesty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves. We would not be committing sins if Allah Azza wa Jal and His Taqwa occupied in our hearts the level that it deserves. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدَرِهِ They didn't put Allah the way that Allah deserves. Allah speaks of those who reject Him. But anybody who commits a sin, partially at least, this ayah applies to all of us. We seek Allah's refuge. If we had the Taqwa of Allah the way that Allah deserves, and if we were conscious of Allah the way that Allah deserves, we would not be committing sins. So when we commit sins, we are demonstrating to ourselves that our level of taqwa and our level of iman has fallen short. We are diminishing the majesty that Allah Azza wa Jal is worthy of in our hearts. Of the consequences of sins is that the number one factor to erode our iman, to diminish our iman is committing sins. In other words, you are literally chipping away at the iman that you have. Every sin that you do, it is as if you're taking an axe and with your own hands, you're destroying your tree of Iman. We all have the tree of Iman. That's why we're here. That's exactly why we're here. We value this tree. We love this tree. The wise person protects his investment and we have no investment more precious than Iman. We have no treasure that is more sacred to us than Iman. 
What would we say of a person who all of his money is in the bank, he goes and he takes it out and he starts throwing it away in the air with his own hands. How foolish is that person? But then when we commit sins, we are intentionally diminishing our Iman. Because of what they do, their hearts are rusting. Notice how Allah correlates the actions with the heart. Because of what they do, their hearts are rusting. In a hadith in Sahih Muslim, our Prophet ﷺ said, that every time we follow a desire, every time we follow a shahwa or a shubha, a disease that we should not, Shaitan comes and he pokes a dark spot in our hearts. And as we continue following, the heart becomes darker and darker and darker until finally our Prophet ﷺ said, some hearts are so dark and murky. They are like, you know, the pool that has mud in it. He compared it to that. You know, the type of pool that you find in the desert that is so dirty, you don't want to drink from it. That type, he compared it to that. The heart becomes murky because all it's done is just keep on following desire after desire after desire. So when we follow our desires and let loose in this regard, we are with our own hands destroying our Iman. And that is not a sign of wisdom. As well of the consequences of sins, is that what sins do is that they cause us to divert from our purpose of existence. Allah created us to worship Him, to praise Him. Allah created us to worship Him and praise Him. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ When we commit sins, we are diverting from our purpose of worship and we're neglecting Allah Azza wa Jal. And what does Allah say? وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ Don't be like those who forgot about Allah. What does it mean to forget about Allah? It means to forget the rights of Allah. What happens when we forget about Allah? وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ What's the next phrase? فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ Allah caused them to forget themselves. This is one of the most psycho-spiritually profound verses in the Qur'an. When we neglect Allah, we neglect ourselves. When we forget about Allah, we forget about ourselves. When we remove Allah from the picture, we remove ourselves. In other words, our purpose of being here becomes meaningless. Now, of course, the ayah primarily applies to the kafir who rejects Allah. But realize, what are sins except the stepping stones to kufr? What are sins except the ladder that takes us down? down into the pit of kufr. That's what sins are. Sins are literally stepping stones because kufr is the biggest of all sins. Shirk and kufr are the largest sins. So every sin that we do, it is partially coming under this verse. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal describes the one who commits a sin is a jahil. This is a observation from Allah. That Allah says, إِنَّمَا تَوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَ Allah will accept the repentance of the sinner who does a sin in the state of jahala and then he repents to Allah. Ibn Abbas said, every sinner, memorize this, every sinner is a jahil. Every sinner is an ignoramus. Because if he knew Allah, he wouldn't commit the sin. By knew, we don't mean a knowledge of the mind. We need a knowledge of the heart. Every sinner is a jahil. May Allah forgive us. We are all juhal when we commit sins because we have neglected Allah. Don't be like those who forgot about Allah. When you forget about Allah, you forget about yourself. Of the repercussions of sins as well, is that sins remove haya and modesty from our hearts. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you have no haya, what's the end of the hadith? You will do whatever you want. There is nothing that's gonna stop you. Haya is our conscience. Haya is our conscience. If we destroy our haya, we have no conscience. And when we commit sins, we are intentionally destroying our haya. Our Prophet ﷺ said, haya is the essence of iman. Al haya min al iman. Our Prophet ﷺ said, every, every religion has a khuluq and a, a characteristic, and the characteristic of Islam is haya. Haya, modesty, being, being conscious that there are like, like. We wouldn't do something when people are watching. We should realize Allah is watching. In the famous hadith of Bahaz ibn Hakim, he said, O Messenger of Allah, can I take my garments off? So the Prophet ﷺ said, if you're with the people, no, you cannot do that. He said, O Messenger of Allah, what if I am all alone? What if I'm all alone? And he said, 
Allahu ahaqu an yustahya min. Don't walk around your house in the nakedness. Don't do that without any reason. Obviously, bath showers or something else. But don't make it a lifestyle. Why? Because Allah is watching. Have haya from Allah. Now, technically, it is halal if you're alone. You're not. It's not a sin. But we are inculcating haya in our hearts in front of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Notice this. Even for the mubah, but dignity, dignified, decency. How about the indecent? How about the undignified? How about the haram if we do it, where will our haya go? So this is of the consequences of sins that our haya will be destroyed. And if our haya is destroyed, we will not have any conscience left.